Hey everybody, Kevin here from the MSOTD Rocks YouTube channel and a couple months ago I made a video about why Italian Metalcore was so good and I detailed five bands that I thought were incredible. Now, we're going to detail five more. But before we get started, please follow MSOTD Rocks on places like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram where you will get the 30 second song of the day feature, a brand new song every single day from the year 2000 to today in rock and metal and all their subgenres. And it's a great way to get in the know with newer bands, appreciate older bands, and get to know the community as a whole and just appreciate the music. You can also contact us on all those pages. We ask you so many different questions. We're always connecting with you. And please enjoy our IGTV videos, which is behind the scenes look at what's happening here every single Tuesday night and Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Central. We do our Instagram live stream. It's an hour. Come talk to us. We always have a blast. Please also subscribe to this YouTube channel because now that you get these videos about the emerging bands in the scene today, you also get our album reviews, the Kevin Figures Out series, where I try and figure out certain bands if I'm not that well versed them, if I like them or not. And of course, our top 10 countdown list and coming up towards the end of the year, the year end awards. This is also the place where the Core Progression Podcast lives. It is our very own podcast where we're interviewing the emerging bands in the scene. They're going to be the biggest bands by the end of the decade. We've interviewed some of the Italian metalcore bands like Sam the Canvas and E-Line. We've also interviewed much bigger bands as well here in the United States like Blacktop Mojo, Wake It Last, Throw the Fight, Kill the Lights, Saul, and many, many more to come. You can find that podcast and watch the interviews here on our YouTube channel, or you can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. Links in the description below for everything. Like everything, subscribe to everything, help us out. Now let's go. So back in August, I started out with a video calling it Why is Italian Metalcore So Good? And I detailed why it was so good and looked at five separate bands on why I absolutely love the genre and that why it's coming out of Italy, why it's awesome, how I got to know these bands and really dove deep into them. And then I was talking about how the bands continue to grow throughout the year and then going into 2021. Now, if you expect to see bands like Stain the Canvas, E-Line, Deep as Ocean, Dead Like Juliet, and Median on this video, you won't. But that's because they were in the first one. So the link is in the description for you to go and watch that video right now. And yeah, so it was fun. So before we get started, how is this video going to work? I'm going to list the band, tell you how I found out about them, why I think they're unique. We'll take a look at some of the song examples, and then we'll wrap up in an overall. Once I go through all five bands, we're going to go through it a little bit more so, and then talk about how they can grow going into 2021. So let's get started. So the first band I'm going to talk about is the band Waves in Autumn. I found out about them after I did the podcast with Eline and Stain the Canvas because their lead singer Davi ended up messaging me saying, hey man, can you check out our stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I'll check it out. And bing, bang, boom, had him on the podcast back in April. And yeah, so this is one of those bands. But what about their music? What is it about Waves and Autumn style that is unique? And when I take a look at it, it's definitely metalcore, but I call it metalcore with like a hybrid hard rock mix. So you take a look at the metalcore aspect of it, definitely take a look at the drumming on this one because they really focus in on the double pet taps, on the heaviness on the drums, and the consistent hits on the snare to really give the pace going, to really build it up and to really bring out that vigor. Also, when you take a look at Davi's unclean vocals, you're gonna get a feeling of metalcore there because when I was trying to pinpoint who his vocals sound like, what I just came out with was his vocals sound a lot like just your stereotypical metalcore unclean vocalist. And that's not a bad thing. This means that he is just what you think of when you think of a metalcore vocalist. So it fits in perfectly with the style. What I do have to give him a lot of props for is the fact that with his Italian accent, he's naturally going to be putting out these more emphasis style lyrics, especially when the constants, it's these hard constants. And I really do like that. Plus when they do clean vocals as well in one of their songs, which I'll get to, this really comes out strong. And then of course, how their construction is done with their songs where classic metalcore construction, you can get the unclean verses, the clean choruses, and unclean bridge, and they really do that to a T. But where does that hard rock mix come in? Where the more hard rock mix comes in, if that hard rock hybrid, is in the guitar. And when you listen to the way the guitar is played on these, the way it progresses, yes, it does have that down tune heavy feel that metalcore guitars do. However, they end up playing with sometimes a little bit of a higher pitch note on it. So they're playing up on that scale. It's like, okay, you're gonna get a little bit of a lighter sound to it. it, has more of a hard rock sound. 
and they're not going to go necessarily as rapid as Metalcore does. They're going to have more of those hard rock progressions. What I do like about this and why it's unique is because this is going to give more of an accessible feel to their style of metalcore than, you know, say something like, I'm trying to think of a good band. Yes, you're going to get bands like Killswitch Engage who are just straight up like classic metalcore style. But when you get something like this, that hard rock uh, style guitar from Waves and Autumn, yeah, this really does work out well in terms of overall accessibility. One song that really stands out about this is their song Yellowstone and when you take a look at it the drumming it's gonna be very rapid it's gonna be heavy and they always consistently hit on those snares with a lot of pace and this really drives up the pace song it really creates that full-on vigor. When you listen to the guitar though it's much more of a hard rock style guitar. They play higher notes on the scale than they would than the like super low down two notes that you would in metalcore so this really creates a different mix where you're gonna get the heavy feel from metalcore but you're gonna get an incredibly little bit lighter feel of like more of a hard rock sense from the guitars plus what i said about dobby's vocals as an unclean vocalist in the previous section and then i mentioned something with a chorus this is where it comes in because they do this like chanting sound chorus much like saying the canvas does but in a much cleaner sense and what really stands out is the fact that their italian accent is not hidden whatsoever through their english and it creates a whole nother deeper sound to this style of chorus i really do like what they do here when it comes to their other song don't sell the bear skin when you listen to their unclean vocals from Dobby, this is where it really comes out because he does hit it with a lot of pace and a lot of vigor. And again, like I said, when he hits those contents, he hits them with a lot of anger and a lot of force. So those hard sounds really do come out. This reminds me a lot of like an unclean style from Chris Motionless and Motionless and White. And I really do like it just because it gives a little bit more of a vigor to the song. So overall, when it comes to Waves and Autumn, once this whole entire COVID thing passes, they have this certain sound, they have a certain vibrato to them, especially with their vocals and with how they use that hard rock hybrid guitar in their metalcore to really expand their reach. It's all up to them to really get their name out there. I know they've started to. I want to see them do it more, though. The next band on the list is Shady, and this is another band that comes to us from the master of Italian metalcore, Mr. Adam Owley. After my first video, he mentioned these guys to me, they were coming out with a new song, and I checked it out, and I'm like, okay, I definitely have to include these guys on the second one. But why would I have to include these guys on the second list? It's because this might be one of the most unique bands, and maybe the most unique Italian metalcore band I've seen, because they mix their metalcore with, like, space rock and science fiction metal. So what does that entail? So when you take a look at this like sci-fi metal metalcore style that Shane has, what you're going to get is from that metalcore style, you're going to get the classic down tune guitars, you're going to get the heaviness to them, you're going to get the rapid pace drumming, the double taps, the heavy hits on the snare, and then when you get to the vocal progressions and you get to the vocal pairs, you're going to get the unclean verses and the clean choruses throughout. But where this sci-fi pattern comes in is on two separate parts. The first is on the guitars, yes, they're down tuned, but the reverb is incredibly high because it gives it a little bit more of this distorted feel and it gives it more of that just overall space feel that space rock really has and it really adds to that whole entire vigor and vibrato and all that mysticism that revolves around what would be, you know, space. And then they also use synthesizers to really bring this out as well. So you're going to get a little bit more of a intricate, futuristic kind of vibe all on that up reverb and on that synth. Uh, synthesizer style. But what they also do is they put a touch of symphonic in there with those synthesizers because when they have those synthesizers in, what they end up doing is they end up having them be elongated process to really create more of this melodic flowing thing that you really see in symphonic metal. So there's a lot going on here, but let's take a look at some specifics. Take a look at a song called Hive where you take a look at the verse of the song and they have that real classic metalcore feel. Again, the unclean vocals, the fast paced drumming, the down tune guitars that really match that pacing. This is something that's a classic metal core fan can really get into but then when you get into the choruses as well you're going to get the synth in there and the synth is going to have this very elongated style in there to really create more of that melodic sense that symphonic metal sense and give a more sci-fi feel to it but then you listen to the guitars well they're going to get that space up with that heavy reverb but what really works out with them is the fact that even in those verses that uh, synthesizer is still there but it plays at a lot more of a rapid pace so it does work out well to connect the two and really give you more of that spacey futuristic feel in such a hard song another song to take a look at is a song called hacking the masses and when you look at the song it is very fast paced very up tempo 
and very heavy with the drums and with the unclean vocals. But what I really like about this song is when you listen to the guitars, yes, they're down to throughout the whole entire thing, but they are high reverb throughout the whole entire thing as well. So they really give a space vibe to it. And my best way to describe it is feel like the metalcore version of like a final boss fight from Star Fox 64. If they were to put that in there, I thought it would have been awesome. I gotta try this out actually listening to it. Overall, when it comes to shading, I love the mixture of that sci-fi metal, that high reverb, that high distortion, and that synth style within that metalcore because there's not many bands that are really trying that out and I've seen it work in the past with some bands where they try that space rock thing. I mean Iron Maiden has a little bit of that space style to them with the high reverb and it really does work and when 30 Seconds Mars had their self-titled debut album they did a lot of that with a more of an alternative rock style and it really did work. I love the Italian metalcore version of it and I can't wait to see what this band does going forward. This is definitely one to watch out for. My third band on the list is Upon This Dawning, and after the first video and after seeing all the bands that Adam Ali sent me, I decided to go to Reddit for this one, the Metalcore subreddit, and I decided to ask about Italian Metalcore, and a lot of Adam fans ended up popping up. But Upon This Dawning was one that really started showing up, so I had to take a look, and yeah, here they are. So I was trying to figure out the sound for Upon This Dawning, I was thinking of something that was like Deathcore mixed in with earlier motionless in white metalcore and what i mean by that is, is when you take a listen to the metalcore version of it you're really going to get more of that classic heavier you know most white creatures kind of vibe. yes the guitars are going to be heavy and down to the drumming is going to be heavy the unclean vocals are going to be really prominent in there a little bit more of a raspy tone and it's really going to come out with a lot of vigor and a lot of force but you're also going to get some synths in there as well to really create more of this like gothic metal feel and chris motionless did have a hand in helping this band out would create their uh, first full album so it does make a lot of sense plus they do add in some strings in there as well and that synth kind of creates like an organ feel too so you do get this little more theatric cinematic feel to the overall sound it is really cool. Where the death core comes in though, is really in the vocals because they do a lot with the vocals. They'll do that crisp, raspy, unclean vocal that's classic in metalcore, but then they'll go with that real deep demonic feel from death core. So there's a lot going on here. Let's take a look at some examples to really go in deep with this. Take a look at a song like Embrace the Evil because when you listen to this, you're gonna get that very classic motionless of white creatures kind of vibe to where you're gonna get the heavy bursting drums, the heavy down to sell of the guitars and you're also going to get more of that synth in there and some strings that truly really create more of that gothic theatric cinematic feel to the overall sound but what really stands out about this track overall is taking a look at the vocals on this because when you take a look at the verses you're going to get a mixture of that demonic heavy deathcore feel of the vocals you're also going to get that crisp raspy unclean vocal style from metalcore but then when you get to the chorus you can get a much cleaner style you're going to get something that's rather clean the guitar is a little bit more higher pitch a little bit they're gonna play a lot more of a smoother sound and for some reason that contrast between that heaviness in the verses and just the crisp and cleanness of the chorus is really contrast against each other and they do it well so take a look at a song like obey where you're taking a look at the song and the organ style synth really creates that classic gothic metalcore style and that has it throughout the whole entire song so nothing more to say here but what really stands out though is just the continuation of the mix of vocals because when you take a look at the mix of vocals you're going to get this in the verses that deathcore demonic style that crisp raw unclean style that metalcore is and then go to something like more emo metalcore that has a more of that like like still a bit more of that like crispy raspiness again look at saying the canvas or something like this they do this really well but then when you get to the cleaner style vocals in the chorus this reminds me of architects through and through i'm like how the hell did they pull this off this is absolutely insane it all works out really well with that gothic metal style overall i am kind of sad this band ended in 2016 yes the guys went off and did other projects so i'm happy that they're doing what they're still doing and that's making music However, I would have loved to see what this band could have done with even more time gone even further, and I hope to see them again at some point, come back, so I can see them in live for one time, but um, we'll see about that. This is the only band that's not active that I'm going to be talking about, so let's go to the next one. The 
fourth band on the list is Perspective, and this is another one of those bands that Mr. Adam Owley sent me that right now they're not under the Owley umbrella, so this is going to be interesting to see because this guy always gives me good stuff, but hey, they're on here, so they're going to be good. When I took a look at their music for their bass, it definitely had that metalcore feel to it, but they also mix it with this more catchy and hooky, clean style chorus that is rather interesting to talk about, so let's dive in deeper. When you take a look at how they construct their verses, that heaviness to the metalcore style is continually there. So you can get the heavy down tune guitars once again, you get the heavy drumming again, and you're also going to get this unclean vocal style that really reminds me a lot of Polaris. And what I really like about this is because what Polaris does really well is you're able to bring out a lot of emotion with the mixing of those unclean vocals with their metalcore style. and. Perspective really hits on this as well. So of course, for someone like me, I would be really drawn to this. But then we get to the chorus and we get something different. When you get to the chorus though, you're gonna get that more hooky kind of metal chorus style in a much cleaner way. And what I mean by that is you take a look at the drums and they still hit heavy, but a lot of the stuff is spaced out a bit more to be more hooky, more accessible. The guitars are still gonna be down to they're gonna be playing a little bit more of a dynamic sound. They're gonna be playing more of that elongated sound as well to really ring you in after hitting you heavy in the face with the metalcore sound and the verses. Then you get to the vocals, they're going to be very clean, they're going to be very drawn out as well, very melodic. And what this does is, when you take a look at what the first verses did and what these choruses did, my god, does it create like a feeling like you're listening to two songs in one. But what's really important is how they transition between those points and do those contrastly work. And what I listen to them, yeah. Yeah, this really does work. So, is it example time? Example time! The first song I've talked about is Against All Odds, and this song, I mean, it had that heaviness, that anger, that raw emotion through their metalcore stylings in the verses, but then the chorus was a lot cleaner, a lot crisper, a lot more melodic, and this kind of reminded me of a feeling like Above My Head by Polaris did, and when I'm talking about that song and comparing this, you definitely have something, because you're going to get that heaviness in the verse that's going to give this raw head power with, again, the down two guitars, the heavy drumming, the unclean vocals that really match it up. But then when you get to the clean, more melodic and hooky choruses, man, you're going to get this more of like a peaceful feel throughout the whole entire song, which really does stand out on this. I was really stuck into this. Then take a look at a song like Kill Me where it's interesting because they do the exact same thing except they end up connecting the two parts of the songs in a certain way. And what they do is, is they have this consistent electronic synth sound they add in there that's in both the verse and the chorus. That again, this really connects that heaviness with the choruses, not the choruses, the verse as well, and the more melodic cookie parts of the choruses together because they have that consistent part in there. But then we take a look at the vocals. Yes, you can get the unclean vocals in the verses, but you're going to get the clean vocals of the chorus, and at the end of them, you're going to mix it with the unclean vocals. So you can get clean, then a quick unclean, then clean, then a quick unclean. And it really does match over this well, so you're going to continue to get that same feel, but it's just going to mesh together very well. Overall, I think this band has something really going for them because when you take a listen to it, yes, they're going to have that metalcore, that heaviness that a lot of metalcore fans love, but then they're going to have these catchy, hooky, cleaner parts of their choruses that's going to be not only more accessible to fans that are outside of that metalcore realm to come into there, but they're going to be memorable and when even the big metalcore heads really stick in with this, they're going to be thinking, you know what, this is pretty dang good due to the fact that this is something that contrasts against each other well. This is something that really does work, guys. This really does. And the last thing I talk about is a band called Eralis, and I think it's Eralis or Real AC. I'm gonna call me Eralis though. And again, this is another one of those Adam Ali bands that he mentioned me about that's on his umbrella, but I'm like, okay, I'll check them out. And this is another unique one because if you look at their Spotify profile and their about section, they say they mix metalcore with the new metal of the 2000s. So let's see, does this work? When I take a look at how they really construct their songs, what I'm going to say is, especially in the verses, they take that metalcore approach with the heaviness of the feeling of the guitars, you know, the down tune style, the heaviness of the drums, but they really go with more of a new metal construction style in terms of composition. So when you listen to it, yeah, you're not going to get that consistent heavy, hard hitting sound that you would on metalcore. You're going to get something that's a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more fast paced, and a little bit more just varied on time, especially more of like a burst style. 
And well, again, this works because when you take a look at the vocals and how they work out on these songs, yeah, you're gonna get more of that new metal sound. Plus, there's some hard electronic instrumentation that is implemented in there that really helps this stand out overall in the end. But then when you get to the choruses, you're gonna get that metalcore feel as well, but it's gonna be a lot more melodic in the sense. So what this does is, yes, you're gonna get that heaviness style of the metalcore, but you're gonna really elongate it to create more of a melodic sense to it. And this is gonna contrast well against more of a faster paced style that the new metal inspired verses are gonna have. And why this works out in the end is just because you're gonna get these varied pacings, but how they kind of switch between pace, how they switch between the vocal styles and the vocal pacings within these sections, they do really well. And there's one song that really hammers us home. Take a look at their song, Lost Control, because when you take a look at the verses, they're gonna have that heavier new metal style with that heavier metal core style instrumentation. And the verses, the way the their song and the way they're presented, they have this power to include the fact that you get that more rap style in there that new metal always had. It's gonna be forceful, it's gonna be impactful, it's gonna be a little bit more dynamic than what you'd expect from that heavy, hard hitting metalcore style. But then when you get to the choruses, they're gonna be more melodic metalcore style, they're gonna be more long, they're gonna be a bit cleaner, and they're just gonna have this different feel to them, and they're gonna have this more peaceful feel after this more up tempo, upbeat, in your face style of new metal that they did in the verses. Now, I explain this and I'm like, you might be thinking, this might not necessarily work out in the end. However, you listen to the song and this completely works out, so I implore you to listen to this song. And overall, when it comes to these guys, man, I really hope that they just continue to go down this path because with Lost Control, you can really see that they have figured out that this new metal, metalcore hybrid thing really does work for them and how they can make this even bigger. The biggest question is this, how are they gonna do it? And I hope they continue to go down that rabbit hole because, oh my God, could this be insane. All right, guys, that's five more Italian metalcore bands that you should be listening to right now because, again, Italian metalcore is absolutely amazing. I think you should definitely listen to it. If you want to find anything on these five bands, look at the description of this video because we're going to have everything you need to have a chance to find them, like them, follow them, subscribe them. One stop shop for everything. Now, because we are still in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and who knows when live shows are gonna return like the way they should, how can these bands keep growing? And my big thing is social, 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 social. I haven't really seen much of these guys on social media as much as I would have, especially during this time of coronavirus, but there's still a lot more time to do it. I know there's a lot of different things, but always be connecting out there, always be contacting people, always be creating content, just always keep getting your name out there, always keep be, keeping your name in the cycle. Because as long as you keep doing that, by the time everything returns, not only will the fans remember you, but other bands are going to remember you as well. And at that point, you're just going to start chugging along and doing even more. It's all about making sure you still get that exposure at this point and stay relevant and making sure you hone your social media game, guys. That's what I want to see. And I think that will help Italian Metalcore in the long run because, my God, when this stuff gets going, I just want to see all these bands just <sighs> explode onto the worldwide scene. And that's gonna be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching the second video of Why Italian Metalcore is So Good. My name is Kevin. We're gonna end this again with the hat flip. I'll see y'all.